Now that we understand how to work with cookies, we're ready to talk about how to work with sessions. Early on, I told you that there are three main ways that we can get data from our users. They can either type a URL or click a link, and that would be a GET request. They can submit a form to us, and that would be a POST request. Or we can pull values out of their browser cookies that are sent with every request that they make. That's what we've been looking at how to do recently. Well, there's actually a fourth one that I didn't tell you about that we should mention here, which is sessions. And sessions are related to cookies, so they kind of go together because they rely on cookies to do their work. A session is a file that's stored on the web server, not on the browser side. It's on the web server in the web server's file system. And you can store a lot more information in this file than you can in a browser cookie. So when we want to save some information, the process is instead of sending it as a cookie to the user, we put it in this session file. And then we still send a cookie to the user, but what we send them is a reference to that session file. Then with every request they make to the web server after that, they send that reference and we're able to look up that session file and pull all the data out of it. So the most important difference with sessions is the fact that they're stored server side and not client side. They stay on the web server. All we send to the client is a reference to help us find that file the next time that they make a request. Using sessions has some benefits as well as some drawbacks. First, let's look at the pros. First, you get more storage with a session than with a cookie. A cookie is limited to 4,000 characters maximum. Now, most times you're probably going to put something much, much smaller in there, but that is the limit. You can't put a whole lot in there. Whereas with a session, it's really limited only by the file storage size that you have on your web server. How big of a hard drive do you have? That's the limit. The other nice thing is that it makes for smaller request sizes. Let's say that we did have 4,000 characters that we were storing in a cookie. Well, every single request that comes from that user is going to carry all 4,000 characters back to us. If we just have a session, then it's going to be sending us just that session ID. That's it. All the heavy data is still sitting on the web server. It doesn't have to be sent in with each and every request. Another nice benefit is the fact that it conceals our data values. Remember, with cookies, we could just go in our browser and see what those values were. But that won't be true with sessions. The only thing you can see is the reference to the session ID. And that ID is really not that meaningful. All the data is still stored on the server side. And that makes it more secure and less hackable. There are some drawbacks, though. It's slower to access. If you think about it, when a cookie comes in, the data comes in with every request. Nice and simple. When a session comes in, we have to get that session value out of the cookie, then turn around and go to the file system, find the file, and then read the data back out of the file. It takes a little bit longer. Now, I think you probably won't notice the difference, but I just want to mention it to you that it is a little bit slower to use sessions than it is to use cookies. Another big difference is the fact that sessions expire whenever the browser is closed. And that's by design. They're meant to be that way. They're meant to be a single session. You sit down at your computer, you go to a website, you visit it, you surf around, and then when you're done, you close your browser, your session's over. A cookie, on the other hand, you can tell to expire five months from now, and it'll stick around. Sessions are designed to expire. If the user closes their browser, then that cookie that has the reference to the session expires and goes away. And when they reopen their browser and start again, they won't have that cookie anymore to send with each and every request. Unfortunately, though, the session file that you were storing all that data in is still there. So that's an important con to keep an eye on, is the fact that those session files can accumulate. It's part of your server management. You're going to want to keep an eye on those files and have a system in place to go through periodically and prune those back. And to say, OK, any session file that hasn't been modified in the last month we're going to delete. And it just becomes part of your regular server maintenance. Now, PHP handles finding the session for us. We don't have to do that process. So getting the cookie value, going and looking for the session, that happens automatically behind the scenes. And then it stores that session information in another super global, which is session. So remember, even though sessions use cookies, that's just the mechanism that makes them work. Their data is not stored with the other cookies. It's stored in the session. So we can have a difference. Cookies are going to be in cookie. The session variables are going to be inside session. We're going to access it in the same way. Let's try it. So to start with, let's take basic.html and open it up. And I'll do a save as. And we'll call this sessions.php. And to start a session, it's really easy. We just say session start. This command has a little bit of magic behind it. Because what it does is it tells PHP to grab the session cookie that's related to the session go and find the session file, open it up, and get the data out and populate our super global with it. 
Or if there isn't a file yet, then let's create the file and prepare to send a reference back to the user with a cookie so that in the future they can access it. So it does quite a bit behind the scenes for us. Now you may have picked up on an important fact there though, which is that sessions use cookies and cookies use headers. And what do we know about headers? A header has to come before any HTML output unless output buffering is turned on. So the session start is usually the very first thing that you want to do. That's a good practice anyway. Before we even do anything else, let's get our session rolling. Let's get all that housekeeping out of the way, and then we'll be ready to take care of business from there. So without doing anything else, let's just save our file and let's load that page up. Go into Firefox and instead of cookies, we'll load up sessions. Now you can see that I'm on the sessions page because the title changed. And let's just go now into Firefox, into our preferences, and let's just take a look at our cookies. Let's do show cookies. And here is localhost. And look at that. PHP SESSID. That's the default name for session cookies. In your PHP INI file, you can configure that to something else if you want. That's pretty standard and it's fine. Now, notice what the content is, though. It is a reference that is pretty meaningless. It's a long string that's going to allow PHP to locate the file, but at the same time, it doesn't give away a lot of details about the way that our site works. For example, if we had a user ID and it stored number 45 in a cookie, well, now the person knows a little bit about it. They know that the record 45 in our database is that user. Now they don't know that. Now they just have a reference to some mysterious file that lives on the web server. Okay, now that we have our session established, we're ready to start working with values. And it's really just super simple. We just say PHP and then session and let's set one. First name equals Kevin. Notice that I didn't have to do any special set cookie kind of thing or anything like that. I can just refer to this variable and PHP will take care of putting it in the session file for me. I don't have to do anything special. And then let's try getting that back. Let's say the name is going to be equal to session first name and then echo back name. Let's try it. Let's reload the page. There it is. Notice that it was able to set it and read it all in the same request response cycle. That's different than what we had with cookies. And that's because we don't have to go back to the user's browser to either set a value or get a value. It's happening right here from the session file that we have open. So it's writing the value directly into it and then immediately reading that same value back. That's a nice thing about working with sessions. Now, there's a lot more that you can do with sessions. You can retrieve that session ID if you need it inside your code. You can unset a single key value pair. Typically, you would just want to set it to null. That's the easiest way to make it go away. There's all sorts of other commands that you would use instead. You can clear all the stored values. All of those are available on the PHP website. I don't think we really need to go into them. For the most part, you just need to understand the way that sessions work, and then we can just put values into them and get values back. And as long as that user sends us the session ID, we'll be able to access these values for them. So that's really all there is to working with sessions. They're very simple, but they're very powerful and very useful. I think when you start developing actual applications, you're going to use sessions five or even ten times as often as you're going to use cookies.